Uh, Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> oh, what's that? Excuse More people me. have appeared. <laughs> the project started with me seven years ago, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then gradually I basically begged people to become involved. <laughs> but you beg well, because you begged some incredibly talented people to help you out with this. Yeah, it's really wonderful. I mean, Joe Sacco was yeah. the very first person that I wrote to, and at that point, it was still, I had made my own mock book. Mike and Paul weren't involved at this point, so I had spent about a year of doing research and knew that I wanted it to be graphic novels, the writing of the displaced, um, their photographs. Then I wrote Joe just this long, passionate letter. And then he said, yes. <laughs> and then I was like, oh my god, wow. And then later on, I met Mike and Paul. And I told them that it would take six months, the book, to finish. And they were like, are you sure? And I was like, of course. Because <laughs> you had so much background in I that. had so much experience <laughs> putting together a book like this. And there's so many other books like this that I'm sh I knew what I was doing. Right. And it took a little longer. It took, long. I would, I mean, with the research and sort of the inception, seven years. Um, but, but this book is, you're going around to different, different places and, and, you know, some actors, when they got a break from shooting a show, might go off to a resort somewhere in the Caribbean, but you've actually picked out some of the uh, harshest places in the world to go visit. This really is the sum of a deep yearning and a deep passion um, to feed my own ignorance, actually. Mm -hmm. My grandparents are originally from Poland and then had to leave their homes and were put into the Woj ghetto. Um, then they were deported. My grandmother had a whole other life. She had a, a son, Iju, and a husband. And then they were taken away from her and murdered. Um, not exactly sure how, but somewhere, she thinks, in Auschwitz. And met my grandfather, who she had known since she was a child in a DP camp in Germany were a displaced persons camp. My father was born there, and then they moved to Canada, where my father's name was changed from Severin to Sheldon. So it's like his former self existed, was sort of left behind. And so you had the experience of going to these, these different uh, places and speaking to actual refugees about their experiences. And was that always? Well, it's not just refugees. I mean, I think the definition of refugee was, was began to be quite constricting mm -hmm. to the book. So I think I still haven't quite figured out the appropriate term, but I guess speaking voiceless, voiceless persons, everybody has a voice but really seeking out stories that should be heard, people who have been, who have been cast out of society, ostracized, uh, people who live in fear, people whose freedom have been taken away, and having them speak for themselves. Yeah. Well, it's really the forgotten people to some extent. It's, it's sure. amazing how overlooked that they can be, whether it's the sex workers or the people in Chechnya or... Sure, and in our, in our, in our own backyard, actually. Only clowns who play with dumplings What do I bother for? Did all of you see the Roast and roast and roast and
So in doing this, I mean, there, there are a number of remarkable people and incredibly tragic stories that, that you, you pull from these people, but it's, the resilience is also uh, amazing to me. But in all those experiences, are there any that hit a little harder than, than others? Sure. You know, meeting these child soldiers on the book who were kidnapped and taught to use guns and can't go back to their home because they escaped. They didn't want to be murderers and they escaped, but they can't go home. Where do they go? They don't even speak the language in Thailand. They speak Burmese. They have no money. You know, what, what kind of a life is set up for those kids and what kind of, what kind of resources are left for these children? Um, and how is the community looking after these children? Um, so those stories hit, hit home on a very deep level. You talk about, uh, you, you've gone on, you're, you've started your tour, and you're going out to talk to people about paper documentary, and I don't want to generalize Americans, but Americans certainly are people who want to, like, what can I do? I want to, I want to, like, I want to take home action. What am I going to do today? Is there something that people can do after they, they purchase I Live Here and yes, read through? Yes, absolutely. If people like this book, what I ask is that they please email their friends, and they tell their friends the reasons why this book is important and how it affects all of us, and that it's really important to support this project. Um, that's a start. Because the more support we have, the more we get to spread sort of this message out there. And the, the, the project's roots are always going to be in the communities themselves. So we need that grassroots support. We can't exist without it, actually.